All right, with your clay lesson, we're gonna talk a little bit about some hand building techniques. Uh, so you know you're working with clay. Uh, as you look at what you have sketched, we need to decide the best way to build it. Uh, you can really set yourself up for success by choosing the right techniques. Uh, so there's three main techniques when you're working with clay with your hands. Um, when we say hand building, that essentially just means you're not throwing it on the wheel, that's it's spinning and, and you're not using that electric technology. Uh, you're just building it all with different techniques that you can do with just your hands. Uh, so those three main techniques, uh, we've got pinch, slab, and coil. You've probably done some of these before. Uh, so pinch is your classic pinch pot. Uh, you can pinch many different shapes. It doesn't have to be this rounded one, but that's the kind of a classic bowl-like shape you can get with a pinch pot. Uh, slabs, we will actually take and roll out flat sheets of clay. Uh, and then we will take these flat sheets of clay and you can draw your design onto them and then cut it out. Uh, you can also use this slab as your base for uh, anything low relief. Uh, but whatever shapes you cut out then can be constructed into forms like cylinders or boxes. Uh, so if you need things with flat walls, uh, not really any curves, but flat walls, then slab is, is the way to go. Uh, a coil. A coil is essentially like rolling out a long snake of clay uh, and taking that, that cylinder and you can have thick and thin, different sizes, you can curve them. Uh, so you have a lot of flexibility with these. Uh, you can make a coil pot like you see here. Uh, you can use different sizes of coils to construct different things. Uh, and even you could hollow it out a little bit if it was a fatter uh, coil. So looking at your sketch, what are some things that you could do? What category does your uh, piece fall into? know that it could be a combination. You could use pinch for part of yours and then add on coils to it. Uh, you could do slab for most of yours and then add on coils to it or, or really any combination of the three of these. Um, for pinch, most of your vessels will fall into this. If you're needing that curved edge, it's definitely gonna be a pinch. You're not gonna really get that curve uh, with a slab. Um, on the other end, if you're doing a vessel with flat walls, that's more of a cylinder shape, then slab would be the way to go. Uh, hollow forms. They have this big empty space here in the middle of this pinch pot. So anything that is a hollow form would be more for uh, pinch. And with rounded edges, uh, the, that bottom edge would be better off for the pinch. Uh, slabs. Any flat pieces. Great for low relief. We could roll a slab and then build up off of it or carve into it. Uh, like I said, boxes, cylinders, but also tools. If you're doing a long skinny tool, you could also support it by putting a slab behind it. Um, that way it would be less likely to break. Uh, coils, freestanding sculptures. You can build figures out of a variety of size of, of coils. You can build some of your tools, like your handles and other parts with coils. Um, and anything really that is rounded but not completely hollowed out. Uh, so that, that could fall in many different parts of your design or categories. So I want you to think what uh, you could use. So let's let's look at a couple design options. If I wanted to do more of like if if I had to design for like a, a standing figure or a warrior um, and I wanted to uh, you know have this person free free standing this is just real quick. Uh, if this was like the person that that I wanted to sketch I would take for like the body initially, I would roll out kind of a fatter coil and have that chunk for the body. And then I would have separate coils for legs, separate coils for legs. Uh, and then you can hand build and add on the feet. Same thing, separate coils for the arms. Uh, each of these though, like legs and arms would be getting fatter as they got up towards the body. So like your arm would get wider as it comes to your shoulder. Uh, you could build a little neck off of this, and you could hand build a head, a helmet, whatever you needed to go on with it. Um, but that's kind of how I would hand build uh, my form, is just a variety of sized coils that I would roll out. And we could probably hollow the body, but most of this would be solid. I don't really hollow things that are uh, uh, smaller in diameter than like my pinky. Uh, if it gets bigger, then, then you could go in and hollow out a fatter coil. Uh, another design, say you had a tool. Um, I know some of us have gone with a route of like swords. Um, if you're going for a tool from that era, I don't know. Let's just make something up. If this is kind of what you're shooting for, um, if that's your design, know that if you are sculpting it super thin, it's going to be very likely to potentially break. Um, so my recommendation is to, yes, cut it out of slabs, but also potentially... Since it is an artifact, leave it 
on a slab, so it's like right, popping out of a slab, so it's less likely to break. That's my recommendation. If you do build it freestanding, uh, then know that I want to see that variety and thickness of the tip of the blade and the, and the handle. Uh, the handle will need to be rounded. The blade will need to be fatter at the base, getting skinnier to the end. Just be very, very careful with those those thinner pieces. Um, and then also for your pinch, I know a lot of people that want vessels. If you're looking for things that ha have a little bit more interesting shape, something like this, you know, if you've got a variety to it, um, this doesn't really look like that pinch pot, but then here's what I would consider. If you look at the bottom half of this, it kind of does look like a pinch pot. So I would create the pinch pot here, and then once you have the pinch pot, we can roll a slab out and build this upper rim and then attach this upper rim on here to get the pot that you want. And then th when those are connected, it will be one smooth shape like this. Uh, so it's okay to use multiple parts. Uh, some shapes will be harder to do because we are not throwing on the wheel. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, so today, what I'd like for you to do is look at your sketch, decide and label this part's going to be pinched, this part's going to be slab, this part's going to be coil, and decide what technique is best for you.